So recently the source code for Unix v4 was discovered on a tape. They took the tape down to the Computer History Museum in San Jose. I've been there, highly recommend it if you ever are in the area. And there they had the right equipment. They could take the source code off the tape and now it's available on the internet. Now Unix v4 is probably not what you're thinking. You might think, oh, System 5, so this is the one before that. No, this is way, way before really even the Unix code was starting to be shared amongst the universities. It's still one of the research versions. But it's important because it was the first one really where chunks of the operating system were written in C. And what I want to do in this video is take the C code for some of the tools that were available in Unix v4 and port them over to Windows to run today. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now I've covered a lot of the history of Unix and Linux in my video Unix versus Linux, so I'm not going to rehash any of that. But just to say that Unix v4 was the first one kind of with big chunks in C. As I said, it was aimed, the hardware was the PDP-11. In fact, in a minute, I'm going to show you it running uh, in an emulator. But what is really key is that we can take some of that source code and then we can port it to modern C and get it running on uh, today's Windows platforms. And of course on Linux, if it compiles for Windows, it will also compile for Linux. Okay, first of all, let's play with Unix 4 running on a PDP-11 emulator in the web browser. And I'll leave a link to this site in the description below. I've just logged in so I can see I'm logged in as root and I have the hash prompt there for me. Now, if I do an LS, that's uh, something we're used to. So LS, and then I can see a list of the top level uh, directories in the root bin dev etc lib and so on now to change directory we use today cd that's not what it was back then it was actually it was actually chdir so let's go into bin and then we do another ls and here we can see some of the binaries and we're going to port some of these to windows that's the idea you can take the source code for these so Okay, so if you type date, for example, there I've got a date in 1974. So if we do chdir dot dot, take us back up a directory, chdir to etc. Another command we use cat. We're going to look at that cat password. There just shows you there are two users, root uh, and bin. And we could do word count, word count uh, password. And it tells us the number of lines in this particular case, which is two. Another one is echo. I can say echo one, two, three, four, and it just prints out one, two, three, four, a very simple program. Another interesting program to run is the calendar program. So if I just type in Cal 2025, it prints me out a calendar for this year, even though this was written in 1974, seems to uh, get it right. Oh, it's 2026 now, isn't it? I forgot about that. Let's do Cal 1 2026. So that's January 2026. So we can port that program over to Windows as well. OK, so here we are uh, on a GitHub repo that's got the uh, source code uh, in it. In fact, this is the Unix history repo, continuous Unix commit history from 1970 till today and it shows you all the different versions we are looking at this v4 version which they've kindly uploaded here and there's lots of other versions in here if you look at the branches you can see free bsd and what is the research ones and you know bsd and bell labs and there's a whole load in there we're not concentrating ourselves with that right now now if we go here's the source code now if we go into slash usr which is user and then into source Source, that's for the source code s1 that's the first lot of source code and here there's loads of source code a dot c is a c file as you'd imagine a dot s is an assembly file let's just click on this this is pdp 11 uh, assembly code we won't go too much into that we will touch on that uh, in a second now we're going to start with the most basic program here which is echo so if we look at echo dot c here and here it is. Now, first glance, oh, that's C code, but there's a few things we need to notice. The first is that this is the old way of doing function definitions. So rather than it being int argc, it gives you argc and argv, and then it defines them afterwards, but before the curly bracket, what those different things are. So here we can see that argc is an int. So if we want to compile this with a modern compiler, we're going to need to change that. 
Now, just about everything else here is okay. There are a few other things we'll look at in some other programs that use a bit more complicated stuff, but that's the main thing. Okay, so here I am inside of Visual Studio Code. This is on a Windows machine, and I've got two files here. Here is echo.c, which is exactly that code that I cut and paste or downloaded from that Unix v4 repository. You can see here the old ways of doing the function definition. And here is a fixed version. So what did I do to fix it? I said, well, we need to include sdio.h because we're using printf here. Okay, and I also fixed this function definition to be the current way to do it. I left all the bracketing and everything the same. I haven't changed to any other style of bracketing. And basically this code uh, is exactly the same as you can see here. And so now we can run this echo fixed.c that this version won't compile here on the left hand side. We can run this, ver compile this version and try it out. Okay, so here I am on the command line. This is a Visual Studio command line tool developer window. So everything's set up, all the, the paths. So if I type CL, which is the uh, C uh, optimizing compiler, actually it's there on the path, so it works. So to compile that program, I just do CL echo fix.c, goes ahead and compiles it. And now I can run echo fixed dot xc one two three four as an example we did earlier on and there you go it prints out one two three four and obviously i can rename that now to echo dot xc and i've got the unix v4 version of echo running here on windows well let's just not stop there let's try some other commands so here is the cal program uh, from that GitHub repository. And you can see here it's got the month names of the months in here. Again, you can see some differences. So again, here's how the function definition is done. Uh, the word register is particularly for uh, the PDP 11 in their C compiler back then to make sure that this kind of went into a register to improve performance. Now, let me just see, is there another thing thing that I need to catch. Yes, here it is here. So there is in the old days, this here, uh, i is equal to plus 24 is the same as i is equal to i plus 24. Today we would write it i plus equal 24. Now, of course, the reason is because this plus 24 actually would get interpreted as a positive 24. So in fact, if you just run this code without changing it, it just says i is equal to positive 24. If it was minus 24, it would be i is equal to minus 24. What we really need to do is swap those around so that becomes i plus equal 24 for modern day notation. So that's another thing that needs to get changed when you run this, uh, when you convert this to modern C. Notice here it uses a go to and it go to long, which is the label down here. Of course, long nowadays is actually a type. So if you try to go to long, that just confuses the compiler completely. So we need to change the name of that. So whenever you're fiddling with this code, there are a few things you need to, uh, you know, convert to modern C. So here I have both programs. Uh, the fixed one and the old one. Again, we've got some includes at the top. Uh, I define register to be an int, which is probably a bit cheeky, uh, but it's kind of a, just a quick way to get that uh, to work. I think there's some cases where register was also used for non-integers, so I needed to fix those manually. And then if we go down, let's see if we can find that i, there it is, i is equal to i plus 24. That's one way to write it. Uh, and I could have done it i plus equal 24. And here's another example down here. It's now I plus equal 11. So that was another case where it was I equal to plus uh, 11, which doesn't work. And then where's that uh, label? Let's just scroll up here. There we go. Uh, it's got a go to uh, and then I changed it to complete year because it was long. What they meant is a long form calendar. I've changed that to complete year and changed the label here to complete year. And if you do all that, then it will compile the rest of the stuff. I've just left exactly as it is. I've not changed anything. Look, here's those two sections here underneath that label. And they're exactly the same. I haven't changed anything. I just made the syntax work with modern C. So again, the same idea. We can do CL cal fix.c. That will write that version. So let's run cal fixed uh, dot xc. 2026 this time there you go and out comes the calendar and what's the other one i did i did cal fixed at 1 2026 to show this month and there you go so brilliant stuff so that's the calendar program from unix v4 running on uh windows and one more program i won't show them side by side you got the idea this time it's word count 
exactly the same. I've left everything the same except for, again, those classic things like here, the, the function definitions and any cases where it was using uh, the increments and it was using the shorthand for it. But everything else has uh, remained the same. So I can compile the word count program. CLWC fix.c and now we can do wc fix.c dot uh, xc and we can get it to count itself I suppose like that so there you go 177 lines now I did mention that some of this here is PDP 11 code so you just click on something out here and that's all PDP 11 code now some of the utilities are written in uh, assembly so for example the cat command concatenate two files okay that's a dot s here that concatenate files now i don't know pdp 11 uh, assembly code some people do uh, i could probably go through this and uh, kind of understand it and convert it but uh, actually with the great tools that we have nowadays uh, for uh, large language models they understand pdp 11 code so I'd have to do it myself. So I can say to uh, ChatGPT, Claude, whatever you want, convert this faithfully uh, into C. If you don't get to rewrite it, because it will just write its own version, but convert it faithfully to C, and it will do that for you. So in fact, here is the C version, straight conversion from the given PDP cat assembly to C. So it's basically doing the same algorithm, doing the same thing, but they've it's converted to C uh, as faithfully as it can. So that's really interesting. And also note, I've had to include some conditional compilation here for the difference in Windows, 64-bit Windows. And if I'm compiling it on Linux, this is because of this size, S size T uh, type, but that's pretty easy to resolve. Uh, and again, we can run, compile and run this now. So same as before, uh, cat dot c there we go so now we can run cat.exe let's try and uh, just do cat.c as the first file there you go so it concatenate it, it, it out uh, we can do multiple files so we can have uh, cat.c and uh, cal fix.c okay and those both uh, come out uh, and so it's there it is it's the normal cat program uh, running here now on um, Windows. OK, so there you have it. Now, of course, there's lots to be done. There are many other programs in there that can be converted. There's lots of PDP 11 code that could be converted to C. Something I didn't try yet, but this could be an idea is to convert it directly to ARM 64 bit or to x86 64 bit and kind of just go assembly to assembly and then kind of uh, compile or assemble those and get them up and running. One could even create a kind of a whole uh, shell with all the different tools. So you're kind of running the user land tools of Unix v4 kind of <laughs> on Windows. And if you have to ask why would you do that, then this video surely wasn't for you. But the fun aspect is actually really quite interesting. So lots to do. Be interesting to see if you tackle any of those. Uh, there's even the C compiler. You could change the C compiler to output ARM 64-bit code, for example. All, all kinds of possibilities. Anyway, that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And uh, please do stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.